Whenever you hear the name Caleb Williams, you immediately start to think of the highlight reel plays, throws from any and every arm angle, and how he is a very good NFL draft prospect. And it's true. Caleb finished his USC career throwing for 72 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions, while winning the Heisman in 2022 and is widely projected to be the number one overall pick in the 2024 draft. The flashes Caleb shows are truly generational, and the talent he's shown at times can only be compared to one quarterback at the NFL level. But that's when Caleb is at his best, and Caleb a lot of the time, simply put, is not at his best. Yes, Caleb can make any and every throw on a football field, and yes, he has the quote-unquote generational talent, but he's far from perfect. In today's video, we're going to break down why Caleb is an elite prospect and why he also struggled at times throughout the 2023 season, and what went into those struggles, and why I think he can overcome them at the NFL level. Now let's begin. Focus on what a player can do versus what he cannot do is a big thing in scouting, and it certainly applies to Caleb Williams. There's good, there's bad, and there is most certainly ugly from Caleb during his time at USC. We are going to start with a bad play from the UCLA game, and USC was down 14 to nothing with a second and 10 on their 26 yard line. USC is running a fade smash concept to the field side with a dig across the middle and a curl route to the boundary side, and what's frustrating about this play is Caleb has the dig wide open, and this isn't just open, this is as open as you're ever going to find, and Caleb has the play right in front of him. This was a very good play call with the play action because it sucked the linebackers down, which inevitably leaves the middle of the field wide open, and gives the offense a wide open pocket to throw a ball across the middle to. You see Ben Johnson do this a lot in Detroit, and there's a reason for that. It works. Caleb had a free first down right in front of him, and I don't know why he didn't pull the trigger here, and that's what's frustrating about this play. His offensive line actually held up, and instead of taking a free first down, Caleb runs out of the pocket with nowhere to go and eventually throws this ball away. As soon as Taj Washington hit the break in the dig route, the ball should have been on him and it should have been a pitch and catch for at least 15 yards. Now, as frustrating as this play is because of giving up a free first down on what was a good play call, this is a part of the Caleb Williams roller coaster that kind of excuses the previous play. It's now 3rd and 10 with the Trojans down 14, and Caleb sees he has a one-on-one -on -one with Brendan Rice. Caleb throws this pass from his 21-yard line from opposite hash and hits Brendan in stride on the opposing 28-yard line. Some quick math can tell you that's a 51-yard throw from yard line to yard line, but when you factor in Caleb is throwing from opposite hash, this is easily a 60 or 65-plus yard throw that leaves you with your jaw on the floor. I know the previous play where he missed a wide-open Taj Washington is frustrating, but that's not something that's not coachable and something that I'm sure Caleb beat himself up on after the game because he knew he let one get away. But the following play was absolutely unreal, and it's not an exaggeration to say, there's not many NFL quarterbacks that make that throw, period. Yes, there are some guys like the Mahomes and Allens, but to trust your guy and to throw it on the run, 65 plus yards is the start as to why he is so highly touted as an NFL draft prospect. There are times where Caleb's confidence in himself borders on arrogance, and there was a touchdown in particular against Stanford, where Stanford only sent three rushers and it became a backyard scramble drill, and Caleb puts this ball where only his guy can get it and puts USC up 35. The very next offensive play USC has, they call a play-action deep shot, and Brendan Rice has a one-on-one, -on -one and you get a great view of how strong Caleb's arm is at the top of his drop. This throw is from his own 16-yard line to the opposing 19-yard line, and he hits his guy in stride. This was not a play where his receiver had to wait on the ball or win a contested catch because the throw was so far behind. One thing Caleb gets dinged for in the NFL draft community was him bailing at times and forcing balls that didn't need to be forced or just flat out missing reads that were in front of him, like we showed against UCLA. That happens not just for Caleb, but hell, you can do this for any quarterback at the NFL level too, and one reason why I don't put too much weight into that for Caleb is his defense was atrocious in 2023. I know that may sound like an excuse for Caleb's poor decision at times, but hear me out. Their defense allowed an average of 34 points per game, which ranked 121st out of 133 teams per sports reference, and they allowed 34 or more points in 8 games this year, including 8 straight games that started against Colorado in Week 5. 
If you allow 40 or more to Michael Penix in Washington or Bo Nix in Oregon, that's whatever because those guys have first round talents at wideout and they're going to be selected in the first two rounds of the 2024 draft, if not both in the first round. But when you're allowing 38 to UCLA or 41 to Arizona and 49 to Cal, you are always in a position where you need more points, hence USC only going 8-5 in 2023. How this factors into Caleb's evaluation is pretty simple. Unless the defense he goes to in the pros is the worst of all time, Caleb isn't going to have to play hero ball in every single game and be forced to put the team on his back just to win a regular season game in October in the Pac-12. So from that standpoint, I don't think it's a matter of Caleb not being able to read a defense or not at times, or taking what's in front of him when he had that type of pressure on him this past year. I know some people will say that's quite an excuse, but even for the down year Caleb had in 2023, for his standards at least, he still played at a good level. Yes, he had some down moments like the Notre Dame game, which we'll get to, but to kind of put in the perspective of how good Caleb himself was at times during his final year at USC, he ranked 4th out of 142 quarterbacks in completion percentage on deep balls, which is considered 20 or more yards down the field, as he completed 51.5% of those passes. The only guys he was behind in this category was Jaden Daniels of LSU, JJ McCarthy of Michigan, and Jalen Milrow from Alabama. A lot of these throws he missed that were deep were honestly due to how insane some of these throws would have been had they been complete, more so than a reflection of Caleb missing a guy by a few yards and the ball sailing on him and becoming an interception. One of Caleb's traits that I think will translate seamlessly to the NFL and piss a lot of defensive coordinators off in the process is his ability to create and his ability to evade pass rushers while keeping his eyes down the field. I know a lot of people love pro comparisons, but there really isn't one in particular that I think from Caleb is seamless. Yes, he has shades of Patrick Mahomes, but there's also times I think he has shades of Josh Allen too. Not to say he's going to be as good as those guys at the NFL level, but two more plays in particular I wanted to highlight highlight from the Stanford game were plays that weren't that insane by any means, but definitely worthy of noting. The first is a 21-yard touchdown run where Caleb just puts his head down and goes for the touchdown and bullies his way into the end zone. He's definitely not like Jaden Daniels in the carelessness or lack of regard for his body while running, but Caleb will do anything to win. One other play from this game that I took note of was a quick pass to the left where USC would get Caleb running and hit his man in stride and they did this a lot. Caleb threw 274 passes that were either 9 yards from the scrimmage or shorter in 2023, but after his teammate makes the catch, watch Caleb sprint downfield and get in the way to block for his guy. He could very easily make a business decision and say, I'm Caleb Williams, I don't need to do this, and yes, he does get caught up in between which defender to go after, but the point is he's with his guys trying to help the team in any way, shape, or form. You don't see this type of commitment from other quarterbacks, and to at least acknowledge this other point, I do think NFL teams would say, uh, Caleb, we have a lot invested in you, and whether our receiver gets five more yards in a week four game, we don't want you risking injury, even though we love the heart, the point stands. I like Caleb a lot as a prospect and he does a lot of things right, but one thing that will need to happen in order for him to maximize his success at the NFL level is to acknowledge when a play is over and to either take a sack or, if you can, simply throw the ball away. Because the Notre Dame tape in particular was, at times, bad. The raw stat line from this game is not pretty as Caleb finished 23 of 37 for 199 yards with one passing touchdown and three interceptions. Caleb was also sacked six times and out of the times he dropped back in this game, he was under pressure for 20 of those dropbacks and in addition to the six times he was sacked, he also threw the ball away twice. Under pressure, he was just 3 of 12 in this game for 22 yards with three interceptions. Out of all of Caleb's game as a Trojan between 2022 and 2023, this is the game people will point to to tear him down, and we are going to break this down starting with the first interception. Caleb was under pressure a lot in this game, and there was a clear miscommunication between his offensive linemen on this play, allowing a free rusher for Notre Dame right into Caleb's lap. It's first down on the first drive of the game, and Caleb 
Caleb's just trying to make a play. It is incredibly easy to sit back and say he should have did this or should have did that months after the game, but my only true gripe with this play, given it was a first down, was to acknowledge how broken of a play this was and to throw the ball at his running back's feet to avoid an intentional grounding penalty. I respect him trying to make a play, but at this point in the game, it's really not needed, and the ball sailed and Notre Dame scored on the short drive to make it 7 to nothing from, again, a preventable play. Yes, the decision to throw this wasn't great, but neither was the miscommunication up front, and I wouldn't put this ball entirely on Caleb. The second interception, on the other hand, wasn't great as USC was down 7 with 4 minutes left to play in the second quarter, looking to tie the game before half. Notre Dame sends a blitz, and the blitz does what it's intended to do, make the quarterback uncomfortable, and with how muddy of a pocket this became and quick, it more than did its job. You can see what Caleb's thought process was as he released this ball, and it was the Dorian Singer would keep going on the drag route as he was splitting the linebacker and safety in the zone blitz, but had no idea this play was already already effectively over. In this situation, the preferred option would be to take the check down as it was there and live to see another play. This interception was preventable because this ball did not need to be forced and that's one thing from Caleb's draft evaluation that he will need to work on at the NFL level because defensive coordinators will feast on this from Caleb especially as a rookie. That's also not to say Caleb doesn't throw the ball away and always forces passes because he does in fact throw the ball away. But if you thought the second interception was bad because of a forced pass under pressure on first down that did not need to be thrown, well, the third one of the first half was by far the worst of all. USC is now down two touchdowns, and on second down, this play is off to a terrible start as the right guard trips on the play-action fake, and it goes downhill from there. Caleb is forced immediately out of the pocket and even has the opportunity to set his feet. Notre Dame was running a cover one, meaning man-to-man -man coverage with a single high safety across the board, and USC is again running a fade smash to the left side, and the DB covering the smash route is reading Caleb's eyes, and drifts back and correctly guessed where the ball was going, and had a very easy interception due to film study, and knowing Caleb is an aggressive quarterback. Too aggressive at times, in fact, and this was a good example of that. You're already down 14 points on the road, and while 3rd and 10 isn't great, this was one of the worst forced passes you'll see that simply did not need to be forced. There were thoughts entering the year that Caleb was on the same trajectory as Trevor Lawrence as a prospect, and not that he was on the Luck or Elway level because he wasn't, but he was a very sought-after prospect entering the year, and he still is. My big concern for Caleb entering the NFL is to not play hero ball as much as he did during the 2023 season for USC, which is obviously easier said than done considering how many points his team allowed each week. Under pressure during his final year at USC, he completed 47% of his passes, and had 8 touchdowns to 4 interceptions while having 16 turnover-worthy plays on 102 passing attempts. When he was kept clean, he threw 22 touchdowns to 1 interception and had just 2 turnover-worthy plays on 292 passing attempts. That number may sound pretty alarming, and it is, if we didn't see Caleb play good in 2022, which we did as he had 0 interceptions on 131 passes under pressure during the 2022 season, and these numbers are per PFF. I think because of the preseason hype with Caleb that everybody wants to overreact to one game and bring him down draft boards, rather than look at two years of work of seeing what he can do consistently on a down-to-down -down basis. Caleb's completion percentage under pressure dropped nearly 4% from 2022 to 2023, but there was a prospect in the 2023 draft whose completion percentage was 54% in 2021 and just 41% under pressure in 2022, which is a much bigger drop off than what Caleb's was from 22 to 23. That player, by the way, goes by the name of CJ Stroud. Now, I don't want to place those types of expectations for Caleb as a rookie considering the year CJ just had, but if Caleb goes to the Bears at number one overall, I like the outlook for him a lot. He will immediately have DJ Moore as a number one receiver to throw to, and despite the struggles the Bears had at the beginning of the year, they allowed an average of just 15.6 points per game over the final six games of the year, including a double-digit win over the Lions, who just went to the NFC Championship game. Caleb has all the talent in the world, and it's shown in a variety of ways, whether it's from different arm angles, launching the ball 65-plus yards, making backyard plays that have no business of being completed, or stepping up 
up into the pocket to deliver a strike, Caleb Williams has the tools to be an NFL star. As long as he does not have a Bryce Young situation in his rookie year, whichever team drafts him will almost immediately reap the benefits of having Caleb Williams. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, as only about 33% of people watching are subscribed, and it helps the channel tremendously. Until next time, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.